Hey there, everybody. Welcome tonight to this uh, webinar put on by the Foundry. Uh, my name is Barry Zundell, and I've been asked to talk to you guys about um, how we at Volusion Studios use Moto to do rigging and animation and get it into, into Unreal Engine 4. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this uh, and excited to show you a few things that we like to do. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a graduate of Brigham Young University's animation program back in 2002. Um, awesome program with awesome faculty. They do a lot of really cool work. If you haven't seen a lot of their student animations, I would highly recommend it. They uh, win student Emmys all the time for their work. It's really impressive. Uh, after college, I went to Disney Interactive, uh, which was Avalanche Software in Salt Lake City, where I was a character lead. And for those of you who don't know, Avalanche Software is the one that makes uh, Disney Infinity. Um, after leaving Disney Interactive, after about nine years, I went to Pixar. And while there, I was a character TD doing modeling and rigging of characters. Uh, I worked on Brave, I worked on Toy Story of Terror, and I worked on The Good Dinosaur. A um, lot of fun, a lot of amazing projects, and I got to work with some of the Moto giants, uh, Rich Hurry, Jason Bickerstaff, and such. After, uh, after the time at Pixar, I moved up to Portland to work at Nike as a 3D lead. And while there, I did um, modeling, texturing, rendering, animation, pipeline development, motion capture with elite athletes, um, all kinds of stuff. So it was a, it was a ton of fun there too. Um, in 2014, uh, myself and a good friend, John Farrell from DreamWorks, uh, left both of our positions at Nike and DreamWorks to found Volusion Studios. Uh, we're based here in Portland, Oregon, and uh, we do all kinds of stuff. We do um, virtual reality, augmented reality, interactive 3D applications, mobile applications, uh, design work, all kinds of stuff. We're kind of all over the map, but we, what we really like to do is really like to push the technology of virtual reality and augmented reality using real-time render engines like Unreal Engine. Um, it's just such a powerful tool, and we see opportunities within many different disciplines and many different industries to use um, a real-time render engine such as Unreal. Um, to do all kinds of things. So we're currently working with theme parks, retailers, um, we're working with medical companies, some high profile companies that I can't talk about, um, architecture firms, and all kinds of stuff. So we're excited about what's going on. Um, so I wanted to start out with a little introduction about our tool set. Um, what we use at Volusion Studios. We use a lot of different tools. We use tons of different software, but we always have some go-tos that we always use. And that first one is being is Moto. Um, we use Blender a lot too, um, but we use Moto a ton doing modeling, UV mapping, surfacing, rigging, animation. Um, and we and we, then we take all that, in, depending on the project that we're doing, we take that into either Unreal or in Unity. Uh, most of our work is done in Unreal just because we feel like the renderer is so much better and it's just so much more, um, uh, it's just more detailed. We can get the effects that we want out of it so much better than we can in Unity. But, but that being said, Unity is a wonderful engine to do some other things. that We do augmented reality and 360 video applications uh, inside, of, inside of Unity because they have tools that Unreal doesn't. So we kind of pick and choose the tool set depending on the project that we're going to work on. Um, but that's a little bit about our tool set. So I want to talk tonight a little bit about rigging. And I want to talk about first about the, t the difference between game rigging and film rigging. Because I know there's a lot of, for those who have worked in games and those who have worked in films, there's not a whole lot of, um, there's not a whole lot of clarity or cross-pollinization about the different types of rigs. You know, when I was working in, in games and then I went to Pixar and they told me there's no joints. I was like, what? I don't, I don't get it. You don't use joints? And they said, no, there's no skeletons, there's no joints, it's all deformers. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, for rigging, uh, for games, um, games, game engines need joints. They need to be able to weight points to joints. And so it's all joint-based. Um, and it can use morph targets, but there's certain limitations. There's limitations with the number of joints you can have in an object or a character uh, there's limitations with how many weights per vertex can be applied. Um, there's, those are just a few of the limitations. Um, and most of the time, the animation that you create gets baked down. Um, so there's not like live IK or things like that in most circumstances. There's definitely live IK and other effects and other uh, real-time rigging stuff that goes on in 
um, game engines nowadays, but and it's getting more and more, and the development's getting bigger and bigger. But most of the time, you're limited to animation getting baked and compressed um, from these rigs. Uh, so that's a little bit about games and how rigs work in games. Um, if you go to film, on the other hand, it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum traditionally. So you can use as many joints as you want. You could use hundreds of joints in a character because it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to, to run in real time. Um, so it just renders a frame and then moves everything and then renders another frame. Um, there's a huge use of deformers such as uh, bend deformers and rotate deformers and things like that. In fact, at Pixar, when I went to Pixar, I was blown away. I was like, I was like, you mean to tell me that there's no rig hierarchy in here? It's just a bunch of like bend deformers and things. Um, it was, it just, it didn't make sense to me. And then as I got rigging, I understood, oh yes, it's much more powerful this way. And, and there are joints there and there are pivots there and things like that, but it's mostly use of deformers. Um, there's highly complicated scripting, all kinds of, you know, multi levels of sculpting that fire, all kinds of stuff that goes on. And, but that stuff is super expensive. So most of the time it does not run at an interactive frame rate. Um, but that's getting a lot better. Uh, this picture that I have up here, up here is Dirk Van Gelder uh, showing off some of the, the uh, technology from Presto, um, which is Pixar's animation tool. And it's amazing what we can push now in the rigs and how just real-time, everything is, is being done in real-time on these rigs. It's really, really impressive. So things are starting to come to parity where um, the rigging in the films and the rigging in the games are starting to, to come together. Um, as game engines get stronger and as real time um, as real time calculation gets a lot faster um, it can it can calculate and and push through these rigs a lot quicker and easier for films so let's talk about rigging for a second in moto uh, here's here's a little outline of what I want to take us through tonight um, I want to go through some basics of rigging just in case you don't know we can go through we're going to talk about some joints and joint orients and how to put joints down and hierarchies and all that kind of stuff real quick and then I want to go through rigging an arm uh, just so that you can get an idea of the workflow that happens in moto when you're when you're uh, doing rigging and how you can do some really cool stuff to create some really pretty sweet rigs um, now these rigs are not going to be crazy big you know really complicated like a lot of the stuff you see from Rich Hurry. Uh, these are these are based on what you want for games and how you want to control things for games. And even that, it's a basic version of that. Um, I'm planning on doing a tutorial set of much more in-depth about rigging uh, characters for games. Um, that's later on and that will come out later. Um, but for now this is going to be a pretty simple thing so that you can just see the workflow and see how joints work and how the weighting works and how creating controls can can really help your your process. And then we're going to talk about animation inside of Moto and how you can animate uh, your characters and create actions and poses and actors and all kinds of stuff like that. And then how that stuff gets pushed out into Unreal. So then in Unreal Engine 4, I want to take you through it just real quick, talk about navigation in it, talk about the interface, but then talk about how you import the content that you create in Moto uh, from Moto via FBX into Unreal Engine 4 and how you, how you can use that. So pretty straightforward tonight. Um, here, this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to go through the demo, and I'm going to go through each step. And I, I've set it up so that I can load different files uh, so that you don't have to sit there and watch me <laughs> do every little step. Um, so it'll go decently quick, but I want to take you through a lot of the basics and talk about how you can use Moto to do rigging and animation so that you can get it in Unreal. Um, so let's go ahead and head over to the demo. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get into get into some rigging here. And the first thing that I want to talk about is joints. I want to talk about what joints are in Moto and how they're different than other packages. Um, there, a lot of it's the same. It's still a point in space, but what a joint is in Moto is just a locator, so or a null in Maya. Um, it's just a locator. And so if I go in, if I want to create something, I need to go uh, find that in a menu. But the nice thing is in Moto, we have these tabs set up so that you can go into setup mode here, which is basically your, your rigging and your effects and setting up all this stuff with IK and deformers and weighting and dynamics and particles. You do that all kind of here. And it's nice because the menu is already set up for you. So I went into the setup tab right here. And I've got my viewport here, and I've got cam a camera and a light. And I don't really want to see that, so I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. 
it's going to bring up my viewport properties and I'm just going to hit drawing and control and then I'm going to go down to um, or I'm sorry visibility sorry about that and I'm going to turn off lights and turn off cameras now be aware if you turn off lights then they won't show up in your scene so you won't your your scene won't even be lit so when I do that I then just go to a default shading model and that way I can see it's just got kind of a default lighting to it okay so here I am in in my viewport and I've got my schematic down here where I can drag and drop items or channels to do uh, hooking stuff up and everything um, but I want to create some joints and so I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna go to my front view and I can do that here I can go to uh, front or anything like that or what I can do is this is the way I do it I hold control and space bar and then just go front let go so I once again control space bar lets you get the pie menus okay so I'm just gonna go front like that control t or control tilde gives you the different uh, the different layouts control one lets you toggle options control two same kind of thing okay so I just hit I just hit control space bar and it gives me what camera I want to be in and I'm just gonna go front okay now you'll notice that Z is towards me actually let's go to the right okay so here's the right I'm looking from the right uh, this is the Z axis and the Y axis now I want to create some joints here and I, so I go to my setup uh, menu right here and I go to right here to skeleton and I click it and then I go to tool properties and let me expand that so you can see it now here I've got the uh, the ability to change the mode I can edit I can insert delete or I can add I'm in add right now so I can add some compensation means that it just it maintains child positions as you move the parents intersection is really cool it means that it will calculate the center of a mesh and put the joint right there as you're dropping it in which is really cool but it's not really accurate um, symmetry you can do it across an axis and then this one is important um, aligning which which way do you align the uh, the joints the way I like to do it that I do it for everything is I like to go Z is pointing at the next joint so the Z axis always points at the child uh, the child in the hierarchy the X is side to side from that perpendicular so it goes out to the left and to the right and then the Y is always up and I like that because I can be consistent with my ups downs my left rights and my twists um, and so that's a really important thing so that you're not just laying down a bunch of joints and then wondering why are these why are these turning around and why are these rotating weird um, you want to make sure that the, those joints are aligned correctly so I go Z, Z direction X axis uh, preserve alignment uh, helps them to as you're moving and adjusting joints they they uh, preserve their alignment and then right here you can do naming so there's a prefix there's a name and then there's suffix uh, for left and right and that kind of stuff in the in the positive it'll be L in the negative it's R um, I don't really need to worry about that right now um, because I'm, I'm gonna rename them anyways but I want to draw a couple of joints here so I'm in the side view in the right view and I'm in my once again my skeleton tool tool properties are here and I'm just gonna click and click 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 and you'll notice and I haven't I haven't clicked anymore and I haven't hit the spacebar to drop my tool but you'll notice how it draws the joints out um, these little center handles allow me to move those joints wherever I need to and the uh, the parents adjust to it okay like this so I can just move them wherever I need to but you'll notice that the Z is always pointed at the at the child Okay, now this one's a little different. This one's this one is pointed in world space because it doesn't have a child. It doesn't know how to orient, so it just drops it in 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 X Y Z world space. Okay, and we'll see why that becomes a problem later and and how you can fix that. Okay, so a joint all a joint really is if you look at this. I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the arrow here, and it just expands the whole thing. All it really is is it's just a it's just a locator. So if I click on that for the properties, it's just a locator. It's got a position, it's got a rotation, and it's got a scale and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's display properties that you can add to it. There's all kinds of stuff that I'll show you how to change here for uh, custom shapes. But really, all it is, is it's just a locator. So you might ask, I'm going to hit the space bar to drop it. You might ask, what? well then, what is this thing right here? That All that is, is it's just, it's just a uh, connector shape. So if I come over here to shape, it's a custom shape right now so it's if I if I drop in just a regular locator it just looks like any other locator from any other program right 
just like, you know, some axes. Um, but that's what this is, but it's got a custom shape. So the custom shapes, it's set to replace it. It's a sphere. It's aligned along the Z axis and it's got a radius of about 220 millimeters. Now this is what you're talking about, link. The link is just a drawing representation of hierarchy is really all it is. Um, these joints don't really have a length. They're not a bone. They're just a point in space with a, with a, with a length between them. Okay. So it's a rhombus, it's solid, it auto sizes. You can play with all this stuff, but you can see what I mean. It's just strictly a, a locator with a connection between it to, to show you hierarchy. Okay. So that's what joints are. And the joint orients, the nice thing about joint orients is they can be changed very, very easily. Okay. Um, now joint orients, uh, in, in Maya, you have to go into another whole, uh, another whole mode and change the joint orient. And there's not really a, a fun way to do that. This isn't really fun either, but one of the things that, that Moto, uh, does really well is in setup mode. Now I'm in the setup tab, but I'm not in setup mode. And the problem with that is now what I've done is I've put these joints in, but they have a position. And if I rotate them, they have a rotation assigned to them too. So it's actually like animation keys assigned to them. And I don't want that. I want a zero rest position. I want something like a bind pose that I can, that I can rig in. So I'm just going to double click those. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete this one. So I have nothing left in here. I'm going to go back to my right, right screen here, and I'm going to click on setup. Now what setup does, it puts you in a specific mode where all you're really doing is you're placing everything, but it's setting it at its zero location and rotation and scale. Okay. So now if I do the same thing, I'm going to go skeleton tool properties, same kind of thing. I'm going to go da, 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 like this. If I grab this locator here, you'll notice it has a position and everything. Um, and it's, but it's rotation is zero. And if I rotate this, it gets a rotation in there. Okay. But what I can do is I can come in here and I can say zero rotation and it puts it back to zero. Now, let me show you what that does. If you go to channels here, there's two different rotations. There's a rotation zero and there's a rotation for the skeleton. Okay. The rotation zero means that's its rest pose. That's where it is when it rests. That's, that's the zero bind pose. And this is the, this is the data that's into that. Okay. So I can make sure that joints don't have a transform or they don't have, excuse me, a position or a rotation that's not, that's going to interfere with uh, some of the rigging. So what I can do is I can go like this. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to zero position. Now look at the position is now zeroed. But if I go back into channels, my position zero is now adjusted just like my rotation zero is. And that way I can have a position of zero. And if I'm piping, um, if I'm piping, uh, um, data into that position or that rotation, I'm not going to screw it up by, by having data that's already there. That's going to have to add to it. And we're going to have to figure out how to do that. I'm setting its rest position the way it is right now. And that can be done all in setup mode, which is great. Um, now I can also turn on child compensate. So what I can do is I can rotate this joint to reorient it without changing its children, which is really helpful sometimes when you need to adjust a rotation. But I tend to leave that off because I, I, I just want to make sure everything is lined up right. Okay. So setup mode, this is really, really helpful. So I'm just going to, I'm going to delete that and we're going to start, we're going to start fresh here. So we've talked about what joints are. We've talked about how to draw them down. Um, let me do one last thing and I'm going to draw a skeleton out here. If you want to draw some children to that skeleton, you just click the box of the one you want it to be the parent. So I click that one and then I do this. And I could click this one and go like this. And I could click this one and go like this. And now I've got this whole new branch of joints. Now, if I double click that, it gets everything. Okay. Because I, uh, I set it so that when I created it, it added it according to where it was in the structure. So that's something that's really helpful too. Okay. So let's get started doing some actual rigging. I know this is probably what you want to see. So, I'm going to come here, come into this scene. I've just opened up another scene. This is one thing I love about Moto is I can have multiple scenes open and I can copy and paste between them. And I don't have to be opening one scene, saving a piece of it out, open another scene, import that piece. Um, I can just 
drag and drop. I can copy paste. It's awesome. So um, I'm going to hit Shift A to go into this. And what I've got, I'm going to go to my front view. I've just got an arm. And this arm, um, this arm is just some polygons. Now I've got two different arms actually. Um, but my first arm, this one that you see is a closed arm and it's got a closed end. The second one is an open arm, which sounds like a journey song because it is. Uh, and it's uh, open along the arm. Now this is important when you're doing rigging because depending on the type of weighting that you want to do, sometimes you need to have a closed mesh. Uh, for heat binding and for smooth visible binding, um, you need to have a closed mesh. So like eye holes, mouth holes, anything like that needs to be closed. It can't be open or those algorithms don't work. Um, and so what I did is I created this closed arm instead of the open arm so that I can, I can do that. So I've got this, I've just got this model that's just an arm, just a hand that I want to go through and rig. Now, one trick that you want to think about one thing when you're rigging is you want to make sure that joints are aligned properly so that they are consistent with their rotations. And so, like I said before, rigging, um, rigging with joints, my personal preference is that Z is down the bone or Z points at the child. Okay. X is perpendicular left and right. And Y is perpendicular up and down. Um, that way you don't ever get messed up. It's the, it's just kind of a, a pattern that I like to follow. Um, it's the same thing with just this little uh, this little icon right here, okay? So because of that, you want to think about up and down rotations should be along the X axis. Side to side or left right should be along the Y axis and twist should be along the Z. So I'm going to call them uh, up, down, left, right, and twist. And they go in that order. So it goes X, Y, Z, which is up, down, left, right, twist, okay? And I like to do that because then they have a good order to them. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop some joints in for the arm. And the way that I like to do this is that the arm, um, I like to go to the top because I want a flat hierarchy or I want a hierarchy that goes shoulder, elbow, wrist, palm. And I want those to be flat in the Y axis. And when you do it from the Y axis view, it automatically flattens them out. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go up to skeleton. I'm going to go to my tool properties. Everything is the way I want it to be. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click and then click here and then click in the wrist and click in the hand, middle of the hand. Okay. Now I put a little bit of bend in it so that it knows when I create IK, it knows which way it's trying to bend. Okay. So I've got my shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand. Now my personal opinion is I like to actually call these bicep, forearm, and hand, uh, and then hand tip or palm. And the reason why I do that is because this joint influences this whole section here. It's not just influencing the shoulder, it's influencing the whole bicep and everything. Same thing with this point. This point is influencing the whole forearm, and this point is influencing the whole hand. And so I like to call them by that instead of traditionally the, the shoulder, elbow, wrist, the, the joint name, I like to call them the segment name. Just a personal preference, but once again, um, that's just something I like to do. So I'm gonna click on it, go to my properties, hit, um, bicep, then I'm going to hit forearm, okay, and then I'm going to go hand, and then I'm going to go palm. Okay, so now if I go back into my perspective view, remember control space, uh, you'll notice it's not quite lined up where I need it to line up, but that's easy because I could just grab it and move it down. Now, one thing that you'll just notice that I forgot to do, and this will happen to you, so I wanted to show you, is that you're not in setup mode. You're not setting a zero position or a zero rotation on your joints automatically because you're not in setup mode. And so if I go ahead and I grab this and I move it, what I'm doing is I'm actually setting data on here, and I can go through and I can hit zero position and it'll, it'll do it, but it will do that kind of by default when it's in, when it's in setup mode. I just try to stay in setup mode at all times when I'm, when I'm rigging that way, I'm not, I'm not setting keys accidentally. I'm not messing with things uh, that I should, it's not a fail safe, but it definitely helps. So I'm going to go into setup mode and I'm just going to make sure, see like this, this now, this has a translation on it. So I'm just going to grab the whole thing and I'm going to say zero position and there's no rotations on it. So now it's in a good spot. Okay. 
So now what I want to do is I want to create the fingers. And with fingers, what I want to do is I want to do it from the side view because I want them to be perfectly aligned in the, in the Z for this. So I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to come over here to the finger, and I'm going to grab my skeleton tool. Okay. And I'm going to put it right here, 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 and then in the tip. Okay. And I'm going to go to my perspective view and notice, oh, it's not lined up. That's okay. Grab it. Move it over. Right there. Now we're good. Okay. All right. And if I want to, which I should, I'm going to zero all. Okay. So that is, in fact, let's just do it to everything. There we go. Let's just go zero all. So now if I go to my channels, you notice there's a position zero and there is a rotation zero also. Okay. So that holds the data of how it's rotated in the in world space. And this holds the data of where it's located in world space, but it doesn't have it in the in the editable uh, position and rotation. So now that I've got that, I'm going to name these really quick. Um, let's just go through really quick. I'm going to name them index one. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to call it index two, index three, and index four. Okay. So. Then I can just duplicate this and I can put them all along here. So I'm just going to right click on here, say duplicate hierarchy, go to move it, move it where it needs to go, go to my top view, put that, that joint right where that knuckle needs to be, and then move these out accordingly like that. Okay. This same thing, I'm going to do this, duplicate the hierarchy, put it where it needs to go, which is about right there. Slide this guy out or back just a little bit this guy back a little bit too and we're good and then once again duplicate the hierarchy drag it out to here drop it right there this one comes back this one comes back and now all the joints are aligned properly and I don't have I don't have X and Y rotations in the joints okay and it's gonna go I'm gonna go perspective so I can put them in place right and so I'm gonna grab this one move it down a little bit so it's in the middle. This one I'm going to move up a little bit. This one up a little bit even more. And I'm in I'm in my world space right now. Okay? If I went to local space, I'd be moving them according to the local uh, rotation of the joint, which I don't want to do. So I just leave it at normal action center and voila, I've got my finger joints, okay? Now, one thing that that I like to do with hands um, your hands are very, your palm is not very stiff. Palms are able to curl and roll over. And your thumb, if you bring your thumb and touch your pinky, you'll notice that your pinky and your ring finger kind of roll in to meet that. And those are called carpal bones. And I actually like to put those in so that they rotate correctly and so that you can do that kind of cupped motion. So I'm going to go to the top view. Okay. And I'm just going to grab my skeleton tool and I'm going to put one in right here. And then I'm going to drop it, space bar, do it again, and I'm going to put another one in right here. And then I'm going to grab both of those and go to my locator and go in here and bring the, the radius down a little bit so they don't look so big. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're aiming at, I want to make sure that they're aiming at this joint. And I could have drawn them like that, um, but I wanted to make sure that these were all lined up. And so the, the way that I do this normally is I'm going to put these in position where they need to go. So I'm going to go perspective. These are a little high. So I want to drop it about there. I'll grab this one, drop it to about right there. Okay. And then I want to go back to my top view and I want to grab this guy. And it, it, this, this is the better way to do this is to align them using a constraint or something like that. Um, but what I want, what I really want to do is I just want to grab this guy, hit, uh, rotate and then I want to just kind of this Z right here I just want to grab right here and then drag out and drag my manipulator I don't know if you can see it very well but over where that joint is and now I know that it's aiming the Z right at that joint okay same thing with this one I'm gonna grab this one come straight down I'm not being perfect but I don't really need it to be I'm just gonna do that and aim it right there okay so now they're both aimed that way and if I go um, left or no sorry back what I can do is I can say, okay, now I want to take that uh, rotation, that Z rotation, and I want to rotate it on X so that it, let's see, this is the pinky, so I want to drag it 
So it goes right here. And then I'm going to grab this guy. Oops. Here we go. And I grab this. And I'm going to go right to there. Okay, so now they're they're pretty much aiming right at the joints. They're not perfect, but they're pretty close. Okay. So what I want to do with those, I want to just grab those and say zero all. There we go. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to take this guy and go P for parent, this guy to this guy, P for parent, and I'm good. Now let's do the thumb really quick. So I'm going to grab these. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to go to uh, duplicate hierarchy, and I'm going to grab it and move it into place. I want, to, I want it to be about there. Now I want it to line up right so it's in the middle of that thumb. So I'm going to pull it down forward just a little bit, maybe down a little bit more, right about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into local space and go to rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it over so it aligns with the thumb. Like that. Okay. About there. And then I'm going to rotate it down so that it aligns with the thumb. And I'm, I'm pretty close, but I want to move it just a little bit more Move it that way and then rotate it up just a little bit there. That's pretty good. So then what I want to do is rotate the joint so that Y is like that. And then I'm going to move it back so it rotates from back here. And then this guy, I want him to come to here and this one come to here. And I've got my thumb joints. Okay, so now I go through and I rename them all, and then parent all of them. So what I do is I grab this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and then finally that one. Hit P. Now they're all children of that hand joint, and I've got my entire hierarchy. And you can see how they're all lined up and all their orients, uh, their orientations are correct. All right. So awesome. So now that we've got this in, uh, let's go on to part two. Okay, so now we've got um, all of our bones, or all our joints inside the mesh, inside this arm, and they're all named appropriately, so we've got them all named right with the pinkies, middle, thumb, carpals, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we, what we want to do is we want to weight it. We want to put some weighting on it so that we can move it, because right now, if I grab this, this rig, if I move it, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so we want to do some weighting. Now here's where the closed mesh comes in handy. So in Moto, I'm going to go back into setup mode because the only way you can bind things is in setup mode so that it has a zero. I'm going to grab this whole chunk here and I'm going to say zero all. That way all the joints are set at their rest, their rest position. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to weight this. And you can only do binding in setup mode uh, with uh, in Moto. And that means that this is all in its rest position and everything is is set and ready to go. So I've got all my joints, I've got all my rotations, I've zeroed everything out. So I want to select the mesh and then I want to select the higher or the base of the hierarchy that I want to um, that I want to uh, bind to. And I go down to deformers and here in bind it brings up this option box. And I can do rigid, which is a one-to-one, -one, so each point only gets one weight, and it's 100%, and it just does it by proximity. Smooth distance does a smooth interpolation and uses um, however many uh, weights that you need. Um, but it just basically does it like a point in space and then kind of goes out from there. Smooth visible it means that it does the same thing, but what it does do is it ignores anything where the normals of the points are, are inverted. So like fingers or legs or crotch or armpit or you know anything like that, it will ignore those things because it doesn't see the point if the normal isn't pointed at it or away from it. Um, and then there's heat. And heat does basically the exact same thing, but it's a, it's a way that the a ray is sent out and then it hits the surface and goes along the surface as heat as, as a heat diffusion does in real life and that gives you a really good um, weighting on the mesh. It's not perfect but it's really good. So I'm going to go with heat. I'm going to hit OK and you'll notice the first thing that this turns red and I have this joint selected and that's because 
it's showing you the vertex weights for each of these um, each of these joints. So now you'll notice as I click on each joint, it's showing me the the uh, weighting. Now there's ways that you can play with the weighting. Um, you can click on here and I can go to an edge and I can double click an edge and then I can come over to weighting and I can adjust the weights and it gives me this percentage and I can just click and drag in the window and it and it takes those percentages up and down. It's really, really nice, really handy. You can do multiple points at a time. You can do a face. You can do, it's just doing the vertex weights uh, on it when you do that. Um, but you can isolate the weights. So you can say only use these weights and throw everything else away. You can paint weights. You can smooth them. You can smooth just the selected. You can scale down the weights. You can erase them. You can set a value. So it's really nice uh, tools for weighting, and it's getting better every time. Um, but now I've got now I've got my arm weighted. So if I turn off setup mode and click on this joint and hit E to rotate, there we go. Okay, I've got this nice. Um, weighted mesh now okay so now I have weighting on here and now I want to be able to use this okay so um, here's what I want to do I've got it weighted and now the thing that I want to do is I want to go and I want to start creating uh, controls so I'm gonna go I'm gonna switch um, scenes here really quick I'm just gonna open this up okay and um, actually you know what? I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back to this one Okay, I'm gonna go back to setup, and I'm gonna double click this, and I want to. I just want to show you from here. Uh, it's probably best if I show you from here. So let's do this. I want to create a control for the hand. I want to create IK for it, and I want to create a control so I can grab it and move it around. So the cool thing that I can do is I can just use a locator to do that, and I'm gonna drop a locator in the scene. So I just create it, and you'll notice it just created this locator right here. I'm gonna call this control hand. Like this okay I'm gonna shrink this one up right there I, I this control hand now one of the things that I love in moto and rigging is the drop actions and what a drop action is is it's it's something that you tell it when I drag and drop an object on top of another it's gonna do this thing and right here you can tell it what you want to do so under drop action I can parent it I can parent it in place I can match which means it does position rotation and scale I can insert it into a hierarchy I can insert it at, a, at the as the parent I can do all kinds of this stuff, um, place and align. So I could align something if I want to. Uh, but I just, well, I just want to do the match. So I'm going to leave it at match. And then what I'm going to do is grab this null, click and drag. Oh, sorry. Grab this null, right click, drag it, and drop it onto the hand. And what it did, if you notice here, is it put those values that the hand has inside of here. And when I'm in setup mode, I can just go in and I can just say... Um, zero all and then that goes into once again the rotation zero and the transform zero okay so now when i want to get that that uh control back to its position i can just type zero and everything and it'll go right back to where it started from okay there's no need to worry about groups and hierarchies and all that kind of stuff it just does it which is great um but i want to change the way this looks i don't like the way it is just a big box or a big uh, crosshair. So under here, under shape, I'm going to go custom. I'm going to say circle. I'm going to uncheck solid and I'm going to take the radius and I'm just going to bring it down. So it's about like that. Okay. And that works great. So now I can change all kinds of things in here. I can go to the display. I can, I can add a wireframe color to it, a fill color to it. I can do all kinds of things, but I'm not going to just going to remove that. I'm going to go back. I don't really care. Um, what I want to do is I want to now create an IK, uh, an IK effector for this for this chain, and then attach it to the control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this joint, this joint, and this joint, and I'm going to go over to Inverse Kinematics and say Apply IK. Now it created this IK. If you look under the bicep um, IK goal. There's a dual joint planar IK, all right? And it put all that underneath bicep IK root, and it will insert that in the hierarchy right above where the last joint is, okay? And this IK goal, now if I grab it and I move it, it moves the whole arm, you can see, but the control is still over here. 
So what I want to do is I want to make this IK goal a child of the control hand. So I'm going to drag it and drop it under the control hand. So now when I grab the control hand and move it, it does all that for me. Okay. Now I don't care to see the bicep IK goal, so I'm just going to turn it off so I don't see it. And now I've got this IK working. Okay. Now the reason why it's not moving with the weighted arm is because I'm in setup mode. If I turn setup mode off and go ahead and do this now, there we go. I've got IK working on my arm. Okay, so it's all working right, except I don't want the hand to follow the IK. I want it to actually remain oriented to the control so that I can use the control to, to uh, change the orientation of the hand. So really easily, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go select the joint, select the control, go over here to modifiers, and there's a rotation constraint. And just to be careful, I, when, I, when I put the control and when I drag and drop it on top of this, I have it to match, so it should be oriented and everything like it. But just to make sure, I'm going to turn on compensation and then do it. And what compensation does is it says, okay, don't move the control, just apply it the way it is right now. And if I hit rotation, you'll notice on this joint, I'm going to hit F in here, the hand now has a rotation constraint control hand. And if I click on that, you'll notice there's no offsets. And that's because even though I had compensation on, uh, the control was aligned perfectly to the hand. So it didn't need any offsets. But in case you had slightly different things, you could do that. Um, so now with that constraint, now I can move this and the hand stays put. Okay. So now I can do this, do this, and the hand stays put with the control. And then when I rotate the control, the hand rotates with the control itself, okay? So that's it, that's it for the control hand and that's how I can control that hand. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is how to hook up some controls so that you have sliders to affect things like fingers. Um, and that's actually a really easy process in here. Um, and that's where the schematic comes in. So let's talk about that. So now that we have uh, set up our arm so that the IK works right and the um, the control hand is working right, we want to set up some controls so that when we click on the control hand, we get some sliders to change the fingers and do things with the fingers. Okay. Now this is really easy using the schematic. And it's imperative that what you've done is that you've gone in these joints and you've zeroed everything out so that it's in the rest pose. Go back into setup just to make sure. Um, but everything needs to be in the rest pose. So if I do this and I do this, double click, double click, like everything is zeroed out, right? And that's so that when I pipe uh, information into those joints, I don't have a mismatch of a number and I don't have something that's resetting it to zero or anything like that. Okay, so let's do this first. Let's do, um, what we're gonna do is click on the control hand and then I'm gonna go over here to my user channels. Well, I have two things selected, so I'm just going to, going to deselect it hit the space bar, then select this, go to user channels and you'll see nothing. I'm going to add a user channel called IK twist. Okay. And I'm going to make its default zero. I'm going to use a minimum and maximum of, of negative 80 for, or 180 for a minimum and 180 for a maximum. Now this custom parameter, this custom channel now I can use to control certain things like I can go to the IK so let's go down to this IK, where is it? It's underneath the control hand, dual joint planer IK. If you look here, I've got, an, I've got something called orient. And that is the orientation of the twist of the IK and how it orients, okay? So the nice thing that I can do is I can take my control hand and I can drag it. I can just say add selected. Actually, uh, let's do this. I'm just gonna go user channel. IK twist, right click, drag it into my schematic and I have it right here automatically. Then the next thing that I can do is I can take my dual joint planar IK and I can take the orient and drop it here. And then all I have to do is say, whatever number this is, pipe it into there because it's at zero right here. Okay. So now if I go to setup and I click on this and I go to user channels, I'll have this IK twist. If I move it, and then I drag this IK twist, you'll notice that I can roll that IK twist, okay? 
But I don't want to have to click on this object and then come over here, hit user channels, click and drag in here. I just want to have it right in the window. So what I do is I click on the control object, go over to assembly, and then under command, you can drop this down and turn on item.channel hall. Okay? When you do that, it's going to say whenever you click it, turn this channel hall, turn channel hall on. So I'm going to click it here and you'll notice, oh, look right there. There is now a slider for IK twist and I can just click and drag the slider just like that. Now I haven't done any roll bones or roll joints or anything like that, so ignore that. But I have control over the twist of the IK and normally you do that with like a pull vector and an object that sits behind the character and stuff and I just don't like that. I don't like having controls all over the place uh, in the viewport. So I like to do this. So I have IK twist. Okay. Now I want to be able to do the same thing, but I want to do it for individual fingers and curling fingers. So what I want to do is I want to add some parameters or I want to add some stuff to this so that I can curl all the fingers. So I'm going to go back to that user channels, add a user channel, and I'm going to go index one, oops, index one UD. Now up down means it's going to rotate along the, the X axis. Okay. So I want to change this to negative 90 and 90 because I don't need it to go past 90. Um, if you look at your joints, most of them don't go, most of your fingers don't go past 90. And so it's not really, you don't really have to do that. But let's, I guess, let's go to 180. Okay. Not 1081. So 180. So they can fold completely over. So let's just do that. Okay. So index 1UD means that's going to drive the rotation value in the X of this joint. Okay. But I want to do some other ones, so I'm going to go in, add user channel, index 1 LR, left, right, and I'm going to add a user channel and call it index 1 uh, twist. Okay. And then what I want to do is add two more. I want to do index 2 UD and index 3 UD. And the reason why I only do uh, UD in both of those is because these joints don't twist. They are one axis joints. That's all I need. So for every finger, I need five parameters. Okay. Or for every joint I need, uh, or for every finger chain, I need five parameters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go like this. I'm going to grab, or all of these right here, I'm going to grab this joint, this joint, and this joint. Oops, not that. This joint, this joint, and this joint. And then I'm going to go over to my properties and I'm going to grab the rotation X, Y, Z, and I'm just going to grab and drag it. And now I've got index one, I've got index two and index three. Now I'm going to maximize this down here by hitting zero on the numpad. And that way we can really see what's going on. Um, and if you didn't understand how I did that, just shift select these and then right click and drag them in. Okay. So now index two, index one, index two, and index three. I've got them all here. Now here's where the X, Y, Z comes in handy. Um, okay. UD is X. So there we go. LR is Y and twist is Z. So it's just bam, bam, bam. If you don't do them in that order, then you have to figure out, okay, now which one is going up and down and which one's going left and right. And it gets pretty, pretty annoying. So two, uh, this one UD, I'm just going to go to um, rotation X and this one just going to go to rotation X. Okay. So that way I don't, that's all I have to set up. So now I go like this, I just collapse them and voila, there's my index finger all set up. So let's hit zero on the numpad to come back out. Now, when I click on here, I've got these five options and I go index one UD. left, right, twist, and then up, down, and up, down. There we go. So now I have full control over my hand or over my finger just by clicking on my hand right here. And these parameters are totally keyable. So when I do that, I'm setting a key. If you notice that, um, I can do this and set a key. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that with all the hand, with the entire hand so that you can see how they're all hooked up and, uh, and we'll keep going. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've um, done it for every finger. 
and normally you wouldn't do this big of a control set on one object mainly because it means that your your user channel window is so long um, that it takes a long time to scroll through and find the one you're looking for um, so I would do something more like create four different controls or five different controls for each each of the fingers and then uh, do this on each one of them just for that specific finger um, but this will work so what I wanted to show you is now when I click on this I've got this huge list um, that shows every parameter of the user channels for um, that controller and if you look here let me maximize this here you do that by hitting zero on the numpad you'll notice my control hand has all of these user channels and they all pipe into each one of these things so like my pinky carpal has all of these set uh, ring carpal same thing UDLR twist is XYZ it makes it really easy to hook up um, and everything is there so now when I go in here hit zero and then I'm gonna come up here hit zero I can click on this guy and then I can start playing with this so ring one UD uh, pinky one UD you can um, middle one put it here and then you can say maybe a little left right and then start dealing with these other ones now look at this so I've piped these in the wrong one you notice this middle three is piped into the wrong thing so I want to clear this here go back to setup hit zero now that is on the ring right so ring three and ring two are going into the wrong socket it should be right or it should be the X it should not be the Y Oops. move that right there there we go okay so those are good now let's check the pinky check these ones up oh, yep those are wrong too so I can just oops click and drag them there oops drag it up to here close that one just so I can see it better drag it up there close that one so that's something you can do to kind of debug uh, what you're working on um, let's check the thumb just to make sure yep same thing looks like I was in a hurry or something but you'll notice that this um, this makes it really easy to just switch it get done get done back in okay fix the ring let's check the middle yep same thing looks like I was in a hurry okay so there we go so let's make sure okay that one's set right and we're all good to go other than that okay so now if I come in here turn setup off here now I should be able to say middle two UD yep ring two UD ring three UD yep pinky two UD pinky three UD okay good sounds good so now I've got it all set up I've got all my controls there and I can move the arm I can orient the hand how I want I can change the IK twist like that if I want to and then I can start playing with all the fingers so ring one UD ring one ring two UD three UD okay like that and the carpals too I got if I go all the way down um, let's see here I can't get all the way down there but I'm gonna go here all the way down to the bottom this is why you don't normally do this but like uh, pinky carpal LR I can pull the pinky out a little bit stretch it out a little bit there okay and same thing with the ring carpal you can stretch it out right there so I can stretch my hand out just a little bit okay so now I've got everything all hooked up the way I need it to and it works great and that's it for all the rigging okay so next we're going to talk about what we want to talk about is animation how you take all this how you animate it how you use actions poses and actors and how you get that into unreal okay so now what I've got is I've got a character that I threw together uh, now this is not a super complicated character it's very simple the controls are very simple but I wanted to use it to show you guys how to do actions and actors and that kind of thing so here I've got this uh, this character it's got the rig in it and it's got you know IK twist fingers curl that kind of stuff um, the feet have a bunch of different options for 
you know, twisting the heels and toes, toe UD, that kind of stuff. All, all that stuff that you would normally use in doing a walk cycle or whatever. Um, that's got all your controls here. So the thing I want to talk about now is I want to talk about animation. So let's go over to the animation tab. And let's come in here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit O on the keyboard and under visibility, show lights and cameras, turn those off and then go to default. There we go. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got a character. Now in Moto, you have the opportunity to create groups and these groups are, are really good ways to kind of put things in containers and say, when I grab, I want this bunch of stuff to be a group and I can just select all of them at once. Okay. And it, it really is a good, a good um, workflow, um, different than what I've seen from, from other pieces of software. Um, but it really is powerful when it comes to getting all this stuff into Unreal um, because it allows you to use actions and poses um, to create all kinds of things. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create an actor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of the control objects that I want, so I want his feet, I want the mane, I want this one, this one, this one, this one, that one. I'm just hitting space bar to drop the channel hall. So those are all the objects that I want. Now I'm gonna go over here to palettes and go to groups. And you'll notice I have one group and that's actually the, the rigging setup for the feet and for the hands uh, in the schematic. But I'm going to say new group, and this is going to come up, and it's going to say, what do you want to name it? I'm going to name it Block Man. Block Man. There we go. And I want it to be an actor. And this actor is then going to, it's going to know, okay, this is, a, this is an actor in my scene. This is something that it needs to be uh, keyed all together. And I'm going to say from selected items. Okay. So now I've got this Block Man actor, and there's 13 items. If I open it up, I've got actions, poses, items, and channels. You can, add, you can add new items into the group. You can add just specific channels into the group if you want. Um, but it's a really nice way to kind of um, package all this stuff together. So what I want to talk about is actions and poses. Now, actions are a way to take a set of keyframes for those objects and store them away as a clip. It's kind of like the tracks editor in Maya, but not really the same. Um, it's, it's a really good way to keep different sets of animation in different places or uh, all in the same scene but not having to have it all on the timeline at the same time and so it really kind of segments the the animations into usable pieces so what i want to do first is i want to create an action and so i'm going to go down here to actions and say action create a new action for the actor and i'm going to call it action one it's a really cool name now this action now is, is active on my timeline. And so all I have to do is I'm gonna say right click, select items, and I'm gonna say keyframe all of these things. And it just set a keyframe for all those transforms on the timeline. I'm gonna to go to frame 20 and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm just gonna say keyframe everything for my actor. Okay, there we go. Now at frame 10, I'm just gonna grab the body here and I'm going to drop him down like that. And then I'm going to select items and bam, okay? And this, um, if I don't have all the items selected, it still knows what actor, key all animated items and channel members for the current actor. So as long as you have this actor, it's gonna key all the items in here. So you don't actually have to select everything. So now I've got this little up, down, up, down, boom, 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 boom. okay? Now I wanna do something different. I maybe want to have him uh, let's see, bend over forward. Okay, so I'm gonna say action, create a new character. I'm gonna call it action two to be really original. And I'm going to do this. I'm gonna grab this. Um, I'm gonna select all the actor items. I'm gonna key all of them. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to frame 20, deselect everything, key, and key them again. Now I can go to the middle and I can set my, I'm gonna drag him down, rotate him around, maybe pull him back a little bit. Okay. So now, there we go, he's animated. Okay. Now I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna create another action. So I go action, uh, 
create new action for the actor. I'm going to call it surprise, surprise, action three. And um, what I want to do now is let's say we just take a, take his feet and pop them up. So let's grab all these items, select the items, keyframe them, okay, go to frame 20, keyframe again, go to frame 10. I'm going to put his foot up like this, like this, Whee! and then this one I'm going to put back here and rotate like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to set a keyframe on everything there. So, whoop. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an action, a new action for the actor and call it action four. And I'm going to put his arms down at his side. So let's go here, select all my items, keyframe them, go to frame 20, keyframe them again, go to frame 10. Go down, drop his arm here, rotate his hand down, drop his arm here, rotate his hand down, like this, okay, and then set a keyframe on everything. So he's waving. Okay, so now I've got all these actions. Okay, so now that I have all these actions, I can then get them out into Unreal. Now, I, in this model, I created two morph targets, and I'll show you really quick. If I go to my item list, I've got my geometry, I've got my block man, and in here I've got my normalization folder, which is all the weighting, and then I've got a chin and a big head, and they're morph targets, and those are going to go out with him. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to right-click here, or say File Export over here, Export As, and I can change it to FBX. Now, Blockman Rig for Unreal is the FBX I want to send it to, and I can hit Save. But before I do that, I want to go to System, Preferences, and I want to go to FBX IO. Now, this is important because it, there's this is what determines what uh, Unreal is going to do with it when it comes in. So I want it FBX 2013, Export All. I want all these checked. I don't really need lights in there. I don't need cameras. I just need geometry and probably materials. I want to save everything else. Um, I can save smoothing groups the, if I want to. I didn't really set any up. but And I want to save morph maps. And then I want to save the animation and I want to sample the animation okay, at, at one frame per second or one frame per um, one frame uh, for each frame. So it's sampling it uh, at the sample rate of 1x. So export actions. This is where it gets really important is I can not export any actions. I can export all the actions into separate takes, which means that when you import it, it will have all the different animations in there that you have in the scene. Or I can export just the current action, so it would just be action four. I like to do all in separate takes um, because it brings them all in at the same time. And the other thing I like to do is if you want to do it, you can just do save only animation because if you have a model that's already in, um, Unreal that has a rig in it and everything, and you're just anim doing animations for that, you can export just the animation and it will bring in just the animation data and not anything else. So right now I've got it all set up. I'm going to say File, Export As, FBX, and then I'm going to pick this FBX that I already saved, and I'm going to say yes, and it goes through and it saves it, and it's really fast. So the next step is I'm going to show you how to open that in Unreal and how to... Um, how to look at the animations. So that's next. All right, so here we are inside of uh, Unreal Engine 4, and I've created a, a blank project, and there's no contents or anything in the scene. It's just a blank scene. Um, so basically all I've got is I've got a player here, and I've got a, a plane, and that's fine. So I wanted to show you just a little bit about Unreal. Um, Unreal navigation is a lot like Maya, where you can hold the Alt key and you can zoom with the right mouse button, you can pan with the middle mouse button, and you can rotate with the left mouse button. But there's also a way that you can um, that you can do it with just the mouse. If you left click drag, you can walk through space. If you middle click drag, you'll pan, and if you right click and drag, you will look. 
Okay, so that way you can actually get into places pretty easily and look around with just one hand, and that way you don't have to have two hands, okay? So that's navigation inside of here. Um, over here, you've got kind of all your primitives. You've got recently placed ones, basic things, lights, visual effects, all your stuff right here that you, that you want to put in. Um, you've got uh, your painting palettes, your landscape, you've got uh, foliage, you've got geometry editing for BSP volumes, which are uh, active volumes inside of the, the editor. Um, and over here, you've got your outliner of your scene, what all is in your scene. Here, you've got your properties for your object or all the details. And then down here, you've got your content browser. Now, this is the important one. This is where all the content that you're going to use in your in your game goes into the concept on into the content browser, and this is where you import everything. So we're going to import that FBX file into the content folder so that we can use it uh, in Unreal Engine. So I'm in version 4.92 mainly because version 4.10 has a bug with the FBX import. There's something that's going wrong with the FBX import, and it's messing with all of the animation and the morph targets. So I'm going to need to wait for a fix to go into that, but I'm in 4.92 right now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go under my content. I'm going to right-click and say New Folder, and I'm going to call it Block Man. I like to organize my content so it's really easy to find stuff. A lot of people just drag and drop and it, it makes a mess. But I'm going to right click in here now and say import. And I'm going to grab that FBX and hit open. Now here's my FBX options. Import a skeletal means you want it to come in as a skeletal mesh. And this is what we want for animation because we want to be able to use the skeleton as the rig to then apply animations to and do stuff to. Import mesh means you want to bring the import, bring the mesh in with it. If for some reason you just wanted to bring in animation data, you uncheck import mesh, it just uh, it just brings a skeleton, you say what skeleton it's going to be, and then you tell it what animation you're going to use. But we want to import the mesh and the skeletal, okay? And then we want to make sure that preserve smoothing groups is on, import meshes in bone hierarchies is on. That means that if you have an object that's a child of a bone, like a sphere or a gun or something like that, it will come in. Otherwise, it'll get ignored. Um, Import morph targets, we want to make sure that that is on. And then we want to import normals and not compute normals because we import or we, we create the normals for the vertices in the in the uh, in moto, not in Unreal. Okay. Now make sure that import animations is on and exported time is chosen. And then I always uncheck import materials and textures on this because I don't have any materials or textures that, that this model is using. But if you have materials and textures and all that kind of stuff that your, that your object or your character is using, keep those on. So I'm going to hit import and it's going to go really fast. It's going to give me this, um, this error where it says no smoothing group information was found. That's because I didn't set any up. Um, the following bones are missing from the bind post. That, if you look at this, they're all tips, or they're the last bone in the in the hierarchy. Uh, that's because there's nothing weighted to them, and so that's fine. That's not a big deal. And then there's no UVs. I didn't set up any UVs on the model, so uh, there were no UVs. So it just created some some default ones. So no big deal. So now what I've got is I've got these these seven files. I've got this skeletal mesh, which is the FBX mesh file. So it's the mesh and the and the rig. Then there's four animation files, which are the four actions that we created in Moto. There's the, a physical asset file, which is basically the rig with collision capsules on it. And then there's the, the skeleton itself that can be used by multiple characters if they all have the same skeleton. Um, so I'm going to double click this. I'm going to double click this guy and go in. Now this is called Persona. And in Unreal, this is kind of how you deal with your characters. So in here, I've got my character, and I can navigate just like I do in the regular world. So Alt, left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse. Um, and I can see right off the bat that over here I've got all my mesh details and where it's coming from, what the file, uh, the source file is, where the physical asset is, all that kind of good stuff here. Um, I can see what it is. I can see kind of some information up here, how many LODs, what it's currently on, how big is it in screen size, how many triangles, vertices, all that. That's very helpful. But what I can see over here is that my morph targets came through. So the chin morph target came in. So I can drag that chin morph target. Okay. I'm just going to zero that out, kick it back on auto. And I can also make his head big and click that one. Okay. So 
I know my morph targets came in, which is great. Now let's talk about skeleton. So let's go over to skeleton here. You'll notice it has everything, even including the folders. So if I go back to Modo, you'll notice that um, if I go to my uh, item list, here we go. If I go to my item list, you'll notice that it says rig. And that rig, even though it's not visible here, it came in under rig and then main. So let's go back over to Unreal and it goes rig, main, body. Okay, so it's all of it's there. Whatever was weighted, that hierarchy gets there or gets it. So um, all this stuff's here, but you'll notice one thing. The tip joints, because they have nothing assigned to them, they're not as thick. And that just means that they don't have any vertices assigned to them. The, the font is not bolded. Okay, um, but the whole rig is there. Everything is there. And so let's go over to animation. Now here's the animation tab, which shows me the rig. It tells me the anim asset, animation asset details. And then over here, I've got my four animations. And you can just hover over them and they show you what they are. So I'm going to double click on this one. Now, you'll notice something here. I did a little different. I, did, I added a few things to my animation and then re-exported the FBX. Okay, but I wanted to show you how you can change this. So um, I've got all my different animations here and I can just double click and watch them come through, okay? So I'm gonna pause this, I'm gonna go back over to Modo and I'm going to go into that action. So now this is my action one and I, and I removed all of that information of his hand coming down, his leg going back and his other hand going up to his head. So it's just this, so I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna file, export as, same thing, okay? And then I'm going to head back over here and I'm going to hit play. Double click this. He's doing that. I can right click and say re import animation and boom, there it is. Okay. So now I want to make a change. I can just go into my animation right here. I'm going to go over to the middle. I'm going to grab this hand and maybe pull it in, go down, rotate like this. Okay, and this guy, sure, why not? Let's put it on his head. And then rotate it around. And then I also want to do his IK twist, right? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go IK twist right there. Go to my palettes and make sure that that is keyed. I don't believe it's keyed right now. So I'm gonna go to item properties, key that there, go back here. Go to zero, go back here, go to zero, and then also, I don't believe these were keyed, so I'm going to do that and that. Go to locator, and I'm going to go position is zero, 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 and rotation, if I click that, zero, there we go. So now I can say key that. Key the position for those two. Key the position there. Let's, let's get rid of this one. So it looks like I didn't set the key right. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Go here again. Do this really quick. Oops, I have them both selected. Just grab that one. Move it down like this. Move this one, oops, what did I just do? There we go. Go like this. Okay. Now you notice that the IK twist, if I go to user channel, IK twist, I need to key that, say 0, 060 and then 0. Okay, so I'm just going to do 0 there. Okay, now I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to go file, export as, grab this, export it, say yes, go back over to Unreal, right click, re-import animation, takes just a second, there we go. So it's really good workflow from Moto to Unreal. Um, you can just go back and forth and back and forth. You can animate in Moto, tweak all your animations, save them out. You don't even have to bake them. You just save them out, and then you and then you can send them over to Unreal, and it will bake that stuff in the in the FBX uh, on the export, 
and it just makes it really a really good workflow. Um, now, setting up animation graphs and blend trees and all kinds of stuff like that, that's a whole different tutorial that I hope to get out um, later on uh, in the beginning of the year. Uh, but for now, that just shows you how to take all the work that you do in Moto, rigging something up for games, um, get it out, get it into Unreal, and preview what, you, what your animations are doing. Um, I hope that was a help. I hope that you learned something new.